Carolina will be jumping it up against Baycott. Grand Hampton with final instructions. Let's go, baby. And we're underway. Georgia Tech controls the opening tap. That is Kelly with the basketball being guarded by R.J. Davis. Really excited to see the way UNC defends over the last 10 games that held their opponents to 70 points or fewer. How about that pass from the freshman, Nate George? Tech could not finish, and here comes Carolina in transition. Cormac Ryan no good, and there's the first rebound of the night from Harrison Ingram, who's been getting all of them lately. Dewana takes it away for Tech. Automatically, you can see the pace of this game is going to be fast. Carolina's going to push. That's what Elliott Cadeau and R.J. Davis are exceptional at. A lot of contact between Cadeau and George. No call. Kelly gets his shot blocked, and they're going to call a foul on Baycott. I'd like to see that one again. Drove right to the right side. Great job by Baycott to coming along. Uh, looks like he got him right there in the arm. R.D., that's the key. You know, it's getting into the depth of their bench and trying to get fouls on a guy like Armando Baker. A lot of people say, well, his numbers are down. I actually think he's playing better basketball this year than he has in his entire career with what he's doing on the defensive end and also the way he's communicating and blocking out. Hubert Davis said as much today about Baycott despite the fact that Armando hasn't attempted more than six field goals in his past three games, five points in each of his last two. He's playing great ball, and this also important for Georgia Tech with Miles Kelly getting a couple of points early. Damon Stonemeyer in his first year as the Jackets head coach. Talked about getting his leading scorer some easier shots, getting to the free throw line. It's okay to take twos. Georgia Tech has the first points of the night. in the ACC has his first bucket. That boy good, man. I'm trying to tell you, and Armando Baycott, great job recognizing the double team by turning and facing. A lot of bigs get caught off guard, but he's a good passer out of the double team. There's another two on the way, and Kelly has a bucket. He's got all four. Guy had two shots versus Pitt, zero points, an absolute donut, not being aggressive, and turned around with 11 points in his next game versus Virginia Tech in the loss. Another one-hand runner from Davis. That one finds the back of the rim. Here comes Nate George. The young Canadian. How about that little pocket feed that Dewana couldn't finish? That's two assists that George could have if they could finish around the rim. Cormac Ryan has his shot knocked away. Let's see who was last to touch it. Going to stay on that end with Carolina. Here is Damon Stoudemire, the outstanding former NBA player. Had a great run at Pacific as a head coach. Been on NBA benches and trying to rebuild this Jackets program. Harrison Ingram knocks down the three. He's been doing a little bit of everything for the Heels. I mean, a 40 point, a 40 percentage three point shooter. A guy that actually is a Swiss Army knife can do so many things for them. He can play defense, he can switch him one through five, he can knock down shots from the outside, he can get you a bucket, but he needs to he also give you a big time assist. Along the baseline, it is Kawasi Reeves. This is not a great offensive team for Georgia Tech, so they're building a little confidence by making some of these shots early. It's a Georgia Tech team, RD, that beat Duke on this court. They beat Mississippi State. They've been in a lot of close games. And that's a critical key for North Carolina early is getting stops, not letting Georgia Tech see the ball go in. Frankly, not letting Georgia Tech believe that they belong on the court with North Carolina. Last foul was called on Zawana, who had his hands on Baycott for that one and gets away with it. The NC State transfer got him off just in time. Not implying that there should have been a foul called there. Wisely took it away. Kelly a step back three and Miles Kelly is off to a scintillating start. Ingram trying to answer. Cormac Ryan flying him. It hasn't ripped away and here comes George. Hand off to Kelly and it's going to be a Foul call on the handoff against George. I'll take that foul by George. He's getting the hot player of the ball. You're going to see Miles Kelly right here 
I mean, what a tough shot over the extended arms of Ingram. Just absolutely in the flow offensively. But RD, he didn't come out shooting threes. He came out attacking the rim, finding a mid-range jumper first. That's something that Damon Stoudemire talked, Damon Stoudemire talked a ton about. Twos, getting in those mid-range shots early to see the ball go in and build a ladder. North Carolina, which has missed six of its first eight field goal attempts, now throws the ball away. The one thing you... I'm talking to Hubert Davis about this team. It hasn't always... They haven't blown everybody out. They've had to fight. They're getting everybody's best shot right now. There's a certain calmness about this team. This is an older group. Not rattled by the environment. Is R.J. Davis on the push. For Mac Ryan. Almost turned it over again. Davis had an opening for a minute. Creates his own and knocks down the three. R.J. Davis. Look at Stoudemire. <laughs> I mean, this, oh this, this, this guy make big time shots or what? I mean, even against Florida State, down the stretch, made that critical bucket drive and find a way to finish through contact. Just one of the most gifted guards we have in the game of basketball on the collegiate level. The other freshman for Georgia Tech, by Dungo, getting his first bucket of the night. Good pass. Good look inside from Cadeau, and there's a bucket for Baycott. RD, that's the assisted turnover ratio that you love about Elliott Cadeau. Two to one, off the pick and roll, finding your bigger player to finish with two hands for Armando Baycott. we got a yellow jacket down on the four. I believe that might be Nongo. We'll check on him when you come back. One of the best three-point shooters in the game of basketball. As you see the knee right there to the back of Ndongo's head. A tough one. Yeah, it was, uh, you see, after he took the contact from Baycott, Ingram was just coming to the offensive glass and caught him in the back of the head. They walked him out. Certainly, we hope by will be able to return to the game shortly. Ty Claude into the lineup for Damon Stoudemire. As they're checking on Dongo, and hopefully he'll be there soon. And be able to return soon. And there's a foul called underneath. We're trying to create a little space. If they're going to get Miles Kelly. Well, that's a smart play by North Carolina applying pressure. When you think about Georgia Tech, they average around 12 and a half turnovers per game. Only averaging around 13 assists. So getting them to be their own worst enemy and speeding them up is what North Carolina needs to do defensively. Seth Tremble has checked in for Hubert Davis. So too is Jalen Withers. When Withers played for Louisville last year, he went 19 and 13 against Georgia Tech. And Armando Baycott doing work on the baseline. Look, RD, if they're not going to come with that weak side double, I'm going to tell Armando Baycott to drop 35. It's going to be his game if they don't. Odd working on Withers. Fortunate to get that bounce pass back. Three-pointer no good from Reeves, and here come the Tar Heels. Davis will pull. So one thing you have to do with R.J. Davis is you have to have a hand up in transition. He's always coming down, hunting his shot. If your hands are down, he has free sight at the rim. How about Cadeau getting on the floor and getting the loose ball? Here comes Tremble. Baycott asking for it. They got double team coming. It's not going to come, RD. That's Left not hand, another bucket for Armando Baycott. An eight nothing run for the Heels. Uh, the sense of urgency by North Carolina defensively. This is a North Carolina team that out rebounds their opponent, and defense is their calling card. Luana can't get it. Baycott pushing it up to Tremble. He'll wait for a little help. Yeah, give her right back down to him. There you go. See if they run a second guy at him. Now, here comes the double. That's they the beat location. it. Tremble for three. Miles Kelly, who got off to a quick start for the Jackets, brings it into the front court. Davis picks him up. Now, Georgia Tech is going to double that block. They're going to have to run and scat as quick as possible to recover on those three-point shooters. George, a little too much contact for him. Withers able to corral the basketball. 
Hubert Davis imploring. Every position to Hubert Davis is yelling, get the ball up the court. Wow. Godot, wow. and one. The freshman from West Orange, New Jersey, will have a chance for a three-point play. Something about those Jersey guards, baby. It's not about Jersey guards, RD. I mean, this is what he's so good at doing, learning how to probe in transition. And by the way, the reason why he beat Nate George, he changed speeds. At the beginning of the year, Cadeau was playing fast all day long. Now he's shifting gears. Tar Heels got off to a little bit of a sluggish start, but they have hit the gas in the last couple of minutes. Getting him to brush is no longer a chore. The sink is a... We have for you this weekend, Saturday afternoon on ABC and ESPN Plus, the NHL All-Star Game. North Carolina and Duke, Saturday night, 6.30 Eastern Time. College game day will be there. R.J. Davis, Armando Baycott will join us live on the show. Pro Bowl on Sunday on ESPN, ABC, and the app. And then what you've been waiting on, I understand you're a pickleball player. <laughs> pickleball slam two, McEnroe and Sharapova against Agassi and Groff. One would think that Agassi and Groff would communicate quite well, given the fact that <laughs> their husband and wife have been for quite some time. They ought to know, know each other's uh, tendencies on the floor, I would say. Their cadences? I would think. Yes. That last foul, by the way, Jay Will, was given to Nate George. You've got Nate George with two fouls. You've got Dongo, who took a shot to the back of the head. So the two guys who have led them in scoring in seven of their nine ACC games now in some manner of trouble in neither on the floor now, Kyle Sturdivant has checked in for the Yellow Jackets, a veteran guard number one. And now you make Miles Kelly the primary ball handler, and he's also their most elite scorer, so you're gonna to try to wear him down endurance-wise throughout the course of the game. See a lot of ball screens in the Stoudemire offense, Ty Claude, and one of the, the things ball deflected. That frustrates me sometimes, if you're gonna go set a screen, actually hit somebody on the screen. The guy setting the screen, if you actually hit somebody, the probability of you being open is exponentially higher because you're hitting the screen. Too many kids these days set phantom screens and they want to slip it all the time. Actually pop somebody on the screen. Let them know you're on the court. That's what Jay Billis does. He sets hard screens. <laughs> Tafara Gapari was the one who hit the basketball. He hit somebody. Withers thought about it. Tech closed out quickly. Getting out there was Ibrahim Asako, who's into the game. Sotomayor's had to go into his bench maybe a little bit earlier than anticipated. Really enjoyable talking to Damon today about his vision for what Georgia Tech can be. His love for being able to teach guys, particularly his, uh, his young point guard, Nathan George, and even talking to him about Dongo, who came to him and said, Coach, I, I watch film, but I don't really know what I'm looking for. Mm. Being able to mentor the guys. and We got a whistle. Out of bounds on the sideline by North Carolina. You know, R.D., off your point about Dongo, it's how many young players in today's game actually speak up when they don't know something. A lot of players remain quiet or silent and just let the game figure out itself. But when you have people that are willing and want to learn, it's a game changer. Here is Sturdivant. Georgia Tech had come up empty on its previous six possessions, and Sturdivant ends that. That last foul on the other end was called on Seth Trimble for the block. So it's a seven-point game as we head for the 12-minute mark. We're in McCamish Pavilion in Atlanta. Reese Davis, Shea Williams with you, and... Jalen Washington goes to the bucket. The sophomore from Gary, Indiana, will shoot a couple of free throws. Man, is there anything that Ingram can't do on the daggone basketball court? I mean, he can guard positions one through five. You can switch them with anybody, RD, defensively. He gets you a ton of rebounds, had 17 rebounds in his last game. But also, he can do things off the PNR, and he's a playmaker. He has vision. And he's one of the most skilled players there is in the ACC. And foul was on Ty Claude. And that, that 17 rebound performance wasn't even a season high. He had 19 rebounds against NC State. His body frame reminds me a lot of Ron Artest back in the St. John days. Right? When he's just he's he's a truck running down the floor. 
but with the agility of a guard. It's special. Another guy who continues to improve a lot of talent for Jalen Washington as time goes on. He'll be relied upon more and more. Back tap will give Carolina a free possession. Who gave you the back tap? Harrison Ingram. Okay, Harrison Ingram. He's everywhere. Washington scrambling around the bucket. He goes oh. up Whoa. strong and hammers it. When you think about how North Carolina can win a championship, we know what their starting five could do. It's the depth of their bench. As you see a big time drive right there on the baseline. And Miles Kelly trying to keep his team in it. But guys like Washington, Withers, having that depth, allowing Armando Baycott to be fully energized. And that's going to be critical towards their run. Tafara Gapare hit that dunk, grabbed that rebound. He had a 20.9 against Penn State. So he's capable of offensive output in Georgia Tech is going to need it. Mari Abram, the transfer from Ole Miss, who's seen his playing time dwindle in recent weeks and trying to give them a spark. Rattles out for Abram. He gets it back, Tech hustling to save it. Uh-oh. Gapari was gonna try it again. He was greeted up top by Washington and it'll be North Carolina basketball. Well, look. We got some grown men playing down below. And one of them is Mr. Washington with a strong finish down low. And if you're gonna do that, young fella, let it out. Yell, let the whole world know. Give me some anger. I need more of that, RD, coming back. New Kinder Chocolate. It has been sizzling and that Winning streak started after a loss to Kentucky here in Atlanta. They've won 10 in a row. They are unbeaten in ACC, played 9 and 0 for the first time since 2000, 2001. And they've done it not only with explosive offense, but Hubert Davis's defense has been strong as well, holding teams to 70 points or under below 40%. They're second in the ACC in field goal percentage defense, number one in three point defense. And basically, you're not getting a second chance against them as they control the defensive glass. We'll get a chance to talk to Hubert before this game. He said that there was a critical juncture throughout the course of the season where he challenged his team. But hey, look, everything for us starts in the defensive end. Everything with us starts about rebounding. That, that is the Carolina way. And when they're disciplined, they're locked in defensively, that leads to transition buckets, which is a category in which they accept. Cormac Ryan, the transfer from Notre Dame, can't find the range. Debo Coleman has the rebound for Georgia Tech. R.D. if Ryan becomes more of a consistent three-point shooter, watch out. And Kyle Sturdivant. Been a little time talking and an unforced error there, a wide pass that Trimble couldn't handle. Well, transition defense is critical for Georgia Tech, but also for North Carolina. If you're going to go under the screen right there, it makes more sense to go over the top. The big did a great job rolling down into the defender. Sturdivant knocked it down. Playing the best basketball of his career over the stretch, averaging around 12 and a half points in ACC play. Sturdivant, great feed right there, and Kapari was fouled on his way to the basket. Talking with Sturdivant today, you Damon know, Stoudemire is his godfather. His Kyle's late father, Gary, close friends with Damon. He was killed in a tragic accident while Kyle was at USC, transferred back here home to Atlanta, and made it his home, and it's been a huge part of the leadership during this transition into the Stoudemire era as Kapari off to a good start tonight. RD, I just want, to, just want to give a shout out to Sturdivant. You know, we talked before the game, and he said they had an opportunity to, to read my book, and I said, thank you. And I said, you know, what, what stood out to you? He said, well, I lost my dad not too long ago, and the fact that he plays for his father, the fact that he's around family with Damon Stoudemire, and uh, those are the kind of stories within college basketball where the importance of team and leadership with a great guy like Stoudemire as a coach really helps a young person continue to develop even through dealing with tragedy. He's a really impressive young guy. He says he 
once his playing days are over, whenever that happens, as Cadeau makes the basket, he wants to either be a coach or an agent. That Cadeau basket snapped a 7 0 Georgia Tech run. Turnover for Tech, R.J. Davis working on Sturman. And Sturman keeps us from getting to the basket. Nice defensive play by Kyle. R.J. Davis deciding to use the right hand. That's an even better block by Sturdivant there. You know, that last play, Elliot Cadeau, I think at the beginning of the season, he rushed a lot of plays. Very much looks on balance now with everything he does. Davis from oh the corner, God. took a little contact. It's a three ball. And R.J. Davis, the ACC's leading scorer, is into double figures with 11. Georgia Tech, you gotta chase him. You gotta chase R.J. Davis. You can't cheat and slip the gap. Look at him, he tries to cut the gap. He recognizes it. Fades it back, knocks down the three. You gotta chase him on that baseline, force him to curl into your bigs. R.J. Davis is too good at making reads off those pin downs. R.D., when I see players shoot the gap from somebody that knows, you're just trying, you're taking the easy way out. Trust me, I took the easy way out a lot in college. Okay? Miles Kelly was working on the freshman. That was how they used to do you two when you were All young. All day. to work on you. <laughs> you always outscored him, though. I made up for it on the offensive end, okay? Yeah, your plus minus was always strong because you put a whole lot in the plus category. Well, like, I, I, I like this by Miles Kelly. You know, sometimes the best way to attack a smaller guard is just take them in the block. And this is the benefit of having a coach who comes from the NBA that plays to ISO sets, recognizing those mismatches and then taking advantage of them with a smaller guard, like a dunk. Our right, run it again. Davis, Sturdivant lost his balance. Davis has some help. Baycott coming on, Armando. Is it four of his first five shots tonight? He's got eight. So by the way, that's a little man complex right there, RD, right? You're pushing the ball down the court. You see a guy 6'10". You slow it down, you allow your big who's trailing, you get him involved and you feed your guy. Tough shot. Kelly has been taking a lot of those. Let's see if they can get a little something from Kowasi Reeds on the other end. And that one goes off of Ingram and it's a turnover for the heels. That'll be their fifth. So RJ is pushing the ball down the court here off the turnover. Look, he sees the big right here. He decides to slow up. Look, the biggest trailing. You feed your big man. Young guards out there. We're at point guard you. When your big runs the floor, feed your big. Reward him. You want him to run the floor. It's going to open up more threes later in the game. Wait a minute. Um, my co-favorite, Jay from Duke, reliably informs me that you said last week on College Game Day you didn't care for big men. So... Well, so I, I what's the real truth when can, here? When I, I care for them when it can help me out, Arden, okay? Oh, that's a charge. And it's going to be an offensive foul on Ingram. Eight-point lead for North Carolina. When we come back hey. to Atlanta, J. Will and David Stoudemire go one-on-one. -on -one. You come back to Atlanta. You know, Damon Stoudemire, you talk about the 1995 Pac-10 Co-Player of the Year, Consensus All-American. I got a chance to play against him when he was in Portland when I was in Chicago. You might have seen me doing a little bit of the shifty shoulder work, RD, <laughs> before we went to break. It's because his shoulder movement was one of the best I've ever seen. People talk often about Sam Cassell, the way they can throw you off with their shoulders. But he was able to cut you with the angles of attack with his shoulders. He was one of the best guards I've ever played against. And he's got his starting point guard back on the floor with two fouls, and Nate George. Sotomayor, a 13-year NBA career. Shot is blocked out of there, and Gapari has made his presence felt. 13 years, rookie of the year. Doesn't have to coach, does it because he loves it, and can be quite pleased with that defensive effort from Tafara Gapari, the youngster from New Zealand. He's long, he's athletic, and please... Do not mistake in that low-key or even kill demeanor from Stoudemire to be not competitive. One of the most competitive guys you ever meet as Ryan knocks down the three. Cormac, a 30% three-point shooter, capable of being even better than that, something that you alluded to, the 
25-year-old who started his career at Stanford, been playing in Notre Dame for Mike Bray, and this year coming to North Carolina. And RD, when Ryan starts knocking down those shots, if you're a guard like Cadeau or RJ, you're going to start driving it toward their side every time because they can't leave him. You have to stay home when that consistent three-point shooter is knocking it down at a high clip. Officials are coming over. They're going to look at the foul. The foul was called on E.B. Dewana. Well, it's not only just the elbow to the face, but it's also the hook there on the go. Let's see. Got John Gaffney going over. Uh, he stopped along the way. Talk to Miles Kelly and also to Nate George. That foul on Dewanis is second. That seemed inadvertent. And nothing more, and yes. nothing more to see there, too, yeah. by the way. So I'm glad they did that quickly. because They just ran into him from behind. So an 11-point lead for Carolina as the Heels go for their 11th straight win. Cadeau has it in front court inside seven minutes to play. We're in the first the half. Zone. We've seen a little bit of zone from them. Stoudemire wants to, wants to play man-to-man, -man, but went to zone some against... Virginia Tech with varying degrees of success on Saturday as Ingram locks it up in the possession arrow belongs to Georgia Tech. Well, look, if you got Pari here, don't bring the ball and put it into his chest. Keep that thing on the left side, tuck it away. I mean, Harrison Ingram with such good hands, if you give him the ball, he's going to wrap you up. Look at that. I love that. I love that. I mean, that's the kind of toughness that you want that Ingram brings to the table. You know, you're just not going to get position on me. I'm going to fight you. Well, Cadeau tried to swipe that inbounds pass. He, he knew what was coming to start the out of bounds underneath. Couldn't quite get up to grab it. Kelly has Davis all over him. Kelly finds a little space and knocks down another three. Miles Kelly, his second triple of the night, and he's into double figures with 12. Tech with the rebound. It's Kelly again. Georgia Tech has done this all year. Jay Will, they get in a hole, they fight out. Hasn't always been successful in terms of getting all the way to the top, but they continue to fight. And Kelly's knocked down. There's some contact underneath, and a foul is going to be called on Dewana. And if that's Dewana, it's his third. It is, and it is. So, Devana, the transfer from NC State, who started the game tonight, part of that rotating fifth starter spot for the Yellow Jackets. And Betty Valentine's coming over to have a look again after that foul. Honestly, I was a little blocked from exactly what the contact was so I've a little would blocked. be making I would be making it up if I said I knew exactly what they were looking at a little block I, I'm sitting on a chair like I'm Phil Jackson over here I couldn't see anything you see the shot go up and it's from the weak side here it's a tough angle to see it I think you know what I think what Teddy was telling us is they were trying to see who, who got fouled, therefore, who'd be going to the free throw line, and he says 55. It's yeah, Harrison Ingram. You know, one of the things I, that's so impressive about North Carolina, RD, and we, you and I do on game day, we get a chance to see so many teams play. So many times when there's a shot that goes up by the offense, you see a lot of teams that stare at the fly of the ball, and they try to out-jump their opponents for that defensive rebound. Harrison Ingram and Baycott, they put a body on somebody. They're literally carving out space to get that defensive rebound. That is the one area that Ingram, I'm sure, would like to see a little improvement. He's a little below 60% in terms of free throw shooting. The rebounding is just fine, however. Axel Wojcik has checked into the game, number eight. Another veteran transfer. Came over from Brown. 
Laycott tried to get it over the top and he couldn't. There's Cormac Ryan knocking in his second three of the night. Four second chance points for the Tar Heels, who've now scored 14 in second chance opportunities to just a single bucket for the Jackets. And lead is back into double figures. Those are the plays that hurt the defense the most. An offensive rebound tip that leads to a three-point shot. Cadeau, Cadeau gets past George. Couldn't finish. And rebound pulled out by Ty Claude. I'd really love to see Miles Kelly involved in more ball screens. Him and Nate George are really good at probing the defense off these. Good pass. George, great feed to Claude. And that is why Nate George is second in the ACC in assists. How about that fine? That guy's going to be a star. And I think Wojcik might have stepped out of bounds. It's a turnover. You can see George off that double, off that pick and roll. Nobody comes from the weak side to stop the roller there in North Carolina. George with a beautiful pass to Claude to easy slam. And once again, Nardi, when you flatten out the defense like that, if there's no help from the weak side, and even if there is help from the weak side, then you have a skip pass. And once and again, same play. How about finding him again? That's about the third time tonight that Georgia Tech's missed a golden opportunity to finish at the rim off really outstanding passes from the freshman George. Well, Hubert Davis is telling Armando Baycott to push up on the screen, to go out and hedge on the screen, try to force the offensive player in George to go the opposite direction so the big can get, so the guard can get through. A little consultation between Ted Valentine and the North Carolina bench. All resolved to most everyone's satisfaction. Kelly might have shuffled his feet, and he did, and Teddy caught him. I thought he'd gotten away with it for just a second. It'll be a turnover for the Yellow Jackets. Headed toward the four-minute mark. He sold out McCamish Pavilion in Atlanta, first sellout in a couple of years. They try to knock off the number three team in the country, North Carolina. Here comes the rambling wreck. George on the pull-up. What great defense and what a better shot by Nate George. George's first points of the night, Jay Will. He spent a little time on the bench with a couple of fouls. Coming back in there as Tech was looking a little desperate. Seven-point game. Jackets have it again. Kelly. Three ball. Kelly now with almost half of the Georgia Tech points. Another miss. Baycott working on it. Claude out fights him. It's a 7 0 run. Kelly feeling it. Is he going to? Got him right. Take the shot on Wojcik. And Paxton Wojcik's going to be called for the block. I tell you, Nate George has a chance to be a special player in the ACC. He can do it off a of pick and roll. And this is great defense by Cadeau, but got away with a little bit of a push off right there. But if the ref doesn't call it, it's not a foul. And then in transition, if you're not guarding Miles Kelly, we have a problem. Georgia Tech is in a dogfight. And be in this moment when you know Saturday you got Duke at home in basically the game that never disappoints or always delivers. You know what, Seth, I, I, I don't, I know that we as media, we lean into that. I actually think that this is a North Carolina team and a Duke team. You saw that last night with the way they handled Virginia Tech. I think these two teams are squarely focused on the opponents that were right in front of them. Now, Seth is right about taking care of the Rock. Versus Florida State in the first half, they had 12 turnovers. They had five in the second half, they had a way better job pulled away. So far, eight turnovers in this game. But to me, R.D., you tell me if I'm wrong, it seems that this is a team that seems to be locked in into who their opponent is today. 
but they're a veteran team. Older guys. Carter Murphy into the game, transfer from Air Force. He's actually doing his first year of his Air Force Academy commitment as a student here at Georgia Tech. He's had an increased role recently, but I think the age and the fact that you have Cormac Ryan, who's been around, and R.J. Davis and Baycott, who played all of these games, I think that helps him. Has to. I mean, the maturity is is strong on this team. Claude from the middle of the lane. Can't get it to go. He gets it back. A fresh 20 for the Jackets. I'll tell you this way, Miles Kelly needs to be met with way more physicality. He just has room to go whichever direction he wants. Got 15 here in the first half. Wow. They lead all scores. A little rocking chair move. George can't finish. Georgia Tech is within four, two minutes to play in the first half, and they've been Without the services of Bai Dongo, their outstanding freshman, who's being evaluated for a head injury, he barely played here in the first half. And certainly hope he clears all of those tests and is able to play later when the giveaway on that end, and Carolina will have it back. Dongo, you're talking about a three-time ACC Rookie of the Week all-tournament at the Diamond Head Classic. And still, the numbers they put it up, RD. I mean, an ACC play, the guy's averaging around, you know, 14 and a half points per game. And rebounding the ball exceptionally well. Three blocks per game. He's shooting 61% from the floor against ACC opponents, too. And foul is called inside. I believe he's going to get Kelly. That one. And that'll be the second one on Miles. You know, I know all, all games are hard, especially road games. We've seen that this year, but... I've said this in studio. There are sometimes when you watch North Carolina, when they elevate their level of intensity on the defensive end, there's no doubt they're one of the best teams in the country. But there's sometimes where they take their foot off the gas. And I've used this terminology before, RD. Like sometimes it seems like they play with their food, right? Like they get a little bit lethargic, lackadaisical with the ball. And that allows your opponent to stay in the game. Now the whistle is Seth Trimble is hit on his way up. I would say that that metaphor that you use is indicative of a man with three kids under the age of yes. five at home <laughs> playing with the food. Yes, it is. That's my everyday life, R.D. I did not play with any of the food at the Silver Skillet just down the street here from the Camus Pavilion. Spectacular breakfast. Lisa, the waitress, brought me a lovely lemon icebox pie that was absolutely delightful. Ooh. Coming up next, our Super Tuesday triple header rolls on Allen Fieldhouse. Rock Chalk Jayhawk against Oklahoma State. It'll be followed by Loyola Marymount and Gonzaga. Uncharacteristically scuffling as it pertains to being a lock in the ACC tournament. The missed free throws, and Carolina got it right back. They haven't scored in nearly four minutes. Ingram will try to put a stop to that. Shot fake, and no good as Ryan goes flying in. Bodies to the floor, and Carter Murphy, the Air Force transfer, gets it. And it's a high handoff in the middle, too low on the pass from George. George almost picked up his third foul on Davis. RJ all the way to the rack. Wild action inside and pulled away by Gapari, and Georgia Tech has it with a chance to get it to a one possession game. Inside a minute to play. George working on Ryan. Kick Good to the kick. corner. Wide open from the corner, and he knocks it down. Ibrahim Asako with just his third triple of the season. Block is called inside as Jalen Washington was trying to get it to the basket. We're going to see Nate George here probing offensively, and he sees Washington in this small corner. He gets into the gap, recognizes he's there, and gives a kick out for a knockdown three. Now, if you're going to be in that corner, you got to hedge and get back. Jay Will, that last foul was called on Miles Kelly. That's number three. Wow. Tough one to take against a much bigger postman. 
Well, that's what you're taught to do. If there's a smaller guard on the big that's posting you up, you know, you call take away that seat. You let him bump into you once, and then when he tries again, you move away, hoping he falls down and turns it over. Washington one of two. And the whistle. And Kyle Sturdivant comes in to get Kelly out of there to prevent a potential disaster of a fourth foul in the last half minute of the first half. Also getting Nate George out of there for the same reason to avoid him picking up his third foul. And Zayden High is checked in for North Carolina. Freshman from San Antonio. Acott returns, 20 seconds on the shot clock, 30 seconds left in the first half. Two-point game. Tar Heels a couple of times have threatened to stretch it out, and Georgia Tech won't have it. Cormac Ryan. I think they're gonna they're gonna bail him out with the inadvertent whistle. Yeah, I, it just to be Georgia Tech ball. Yeah, he can't touch it if he left his feet, which he threw it down. Georgia Tech basketball. It's again another turnover for North Carolina. A careless turnover. But but you know what? He didn't he didn't touch it. That's still turnover, they, right? Well they 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 grabbed the ball, but there was a whistle. That's yeah. why they stopped play. That's what I'm saying. I think Valentine immediately pointed to himself. No harm, no foul. Once again, just North Carolina not taking care of the ball in the first half. That's why it's a two-point game. Well, Tremble is a right. great on-ball defender. And Seth, a little too aggressive there. But foul to Gibbs. Yep. So no problem there. Great pressure by Trimble, though. That's what you want. You want Nate George playing with his back to the basket. But if they foul here now, would send Georgia Tech to the line. I will go right at that matchup on the block. We'll give Miles Kelly the ball right there on the block against Ryan. Lacey Reeves inbound right in front of us, and Trimble almost takes it away from George. George gets past his man, and it's going to be a goal tend on Zayden High. And that'll tie the game with a second to go. And there are a lot of Carolina fans here, but listen to this wide-out crowd show their appreciation for a Georgia Tech team, which has lost eight of nine and a second away from going to halftime tied with the number three team in the country. It was definitely the right call. He turned that corner and he got Trimble on his hip. There was nothing Trimble could do. R.J. Davis couldn't get it to go and Georgia Tech closes the half on a 12-1 run. Images of the standout freshman by Dongo who suffered a head injury and it's been ruled out for the remainder of the game after playing just a few minutes early. First possession for the heels, Harrison Ingram. Thought he got fouled, no call. And Georgia Tech with a chance to take the lead. Great job by Georgia Tech rotating for the weak side to contest that layup by Ingram. Here's Nate George, way too long. Tech will get another opportunity. Kowasi Reeves, he gets his own and tries it again. Still won't go. Dewana playing with three fouls. He couldn't get it to go. Stoudemire really frustrated on the sideline. A lot of golden opportunities. And then R.J. Davis makes it look so easy. You got to convert if you're Georgia Tech when you get four offensive rebounds. Those are the possessions that hurt the most. R.J. Davis so crafty and finishing the shot around the rim. He's tried to slip that screen. George gets into the lane, can't get it. Nate has it back and puts it home. So five offensive rebounds in the last two possessions for Georgia Tech. They're a very good offensive rebounding team, but that's been a strength of this Carolina squad is keeping you off of your offensive glass. But Georgia Tech, one of the better offensive rebounding teams in the ACC. There's Davis again, knocked loose. Ingram chases it down, Ryan for three. And it's pulled out of there by Claude. I don't think that Ryan needs to settle for that shot. The defender was sprinting at him. Put the ball on the ground and make a play. Hey. Kelly 
misses another rebound for Ingram. He's on the run, fires ahead to Davis. RJ did well to keep that one in bounds. Baycott has it on the baseline. Extra pass to Davis. One and done for the Heels, and Nate George has it. Georgia Tech with a chance to go back on top. Got to drive left if he wants him. Kelly pulled up for two. Wild shot, didn't even hit the rim. Shot clock still rolling. Georgia Tech just out fighting North Carolina for the basketball right now. Shot clock winding down, and Nate George gets in there and draws a foul. Foul is called on Cadeau. I mean, that's the second time throughout the course of this game you feel like Nate George has gotten away with a little bit of a push off there on Elliott Cadeau. They had one time on the drive in the first half and then there. But still, for North Carolina, Hubert Davis absolutely living here on the sidelines about the fact you've given up six offensive rebounds. I mean, it's in a span of a one minute here, and it's carving out space, getting those defensive rebounds that start the fast break on the offensive end. Jay, well, they've allowed more offensive rebounds in the first three and a half minutes of the second half. They did the entire first half. One of the reasons for the frustration we're seeing from Hubert Davis here is Nate George. And the freshman misses the free throw. Not a great free throw shooter, mid six. So here's what I would like to see from North Carolina right now. Hubert Davis, who RD, you and I have known him for a pretty extensive time the most even kill individuals you ever meet. His passion, his sense of urgency, his tenacity on the sideline, I don't know who is representing that on the court right now. After you have a lackluster first half, who is coming out and setting the tone for North Carolina on the floor as a leader? You know, R.J. Davis is a great scorer, but somebody needs to bring it defensively. Georgia Tech, you just saw, had its first lead since the 15 and a half mark of the first half. It didn't last long as the Heels are back up by one. Kapari with the screen and gets the pass. George, and he missed it right at the rim. Yet another missed opportunity for the Yellow Jackets. Davis's shot rims out. Ryan fighting for it, and Ingram drops it in. Carolina contesting at the rim and then giving Georgia Tech a taste of their own medicine on offensive glass. George backs his man down and he draws the foul again. You see right just grabbing the offensive rebound. Ingram just being a recipient and going up strong. And Hubert, once again, I'm telling you that the energy that he's trying to give his team right now on the sideline is what you need on the road. So everybody always says road games are tough, and they are RD, but if you can have that fight, that tenacity, like Hubert Davis just showed, North Carolina would be in a different position. Also this weekend, when I see our friend Jess Sims, I'm going to have her evaluate this tape, hopefully an ISO tape on Hubert, and I think we can get an entire 20-minute high-intensity interval training workout out of it. <laughs> it's like a high-intense Zumba class? Yeah. MMA, MMA, maybe. maybe. Yeah. Jab, cross, hook, uppercut. <laughs> George has eight points tonight. Uh, Nate George playing in a game like this when he thought a few months ago he was just going to play another year of high school ball. Scholarship came available late, wound up at Tech just before classes started, didn't play the first three games, and now it's turned into one of the better young guards in the ACC. What a great play. And he has shown a veteran move from R.J. Davis. R.J. now up to 15. Three-point lead for the Heels. Uh, Dewana set a good screen, almost got it back from Kelly. Good active hands by the heels. And there Doe reached in and got Sturdivant on his way to the bucket. And uh, Cadeau, the youngster, has run into some foul trouble in the last few minutes. That was his third three-point lead for number three. But they're in a fight. <laughs> 
in Atlanta. It's been so long since I've seen you. You guys should come over and watch the game again this Sunday. There's a good miscommunication right there by Nate George. He thinks there's a switch. You see a flare screen by Washington for RJ. He comes over the top. Big doesn't get out there. What great action by North Carolina and execution on the play. And if you're Georgia Tech, if you're going to switch, switch. If you're going to stay at home, you got to be up on it and chase RJ, force him into the threes to be a two-point score. Davis with 15 tonight, hit three of his six triples. Kyle Sturdivant, the veteran, going to the free throw line. He now has a half dozen. So what we've seen the last three possessions for Georgia Tech is when the shot clock is dwindling down, each guard, Studebert and George, they are attacking that individual matchup against Cadeau. Kyle makes them both one point game. Seth Trimble's return for the Tar Heels. Davis turns the corner all the way inside, and there's a whistle as John Gaffney called the foul. And that's just where Nate George, being a younger player, you don't need to swipe down at the ball. You know, make R.J. Davis finish over the trees. Like, that is a win. You are bailing him out when you do that. And R.J. Davis is really unique in the game of basketball at finding creative ways to get to the free throw line. A savvy veteran who understands how to play. Don't bail him out. Make him make difficult shots. Well, he's also the ACC's leading free throw shooter. North Carolina hasn't done that well tonight as a team. With that make, they're now just four of ten. That was the third foul, by the way, on George. RJ with the highest free throw percentage in UNC history. On pace to be third highest in the season in ACC behind J.J. Redick in 3 4 and then J.J. Redick again. And 04 05. Kelly's going to take a break. They do leave George out there to run the show. Playing with those three fouls, but I mean, you've lost eight out of nine. <laughs> Might as well leave your dudes out there and try to get this thing turned around. They have won two games against ranked opponents this year, beating Duke, beating Mississippi State. Had a win over Clemson on the road, in which George was just spectacular in overtime. He and Dongo, as we mentioned earlier, the head injury earlier will not return tonight. What a great defensive possession by North Carolina. Harrison Ingram was all over. Multiple players denying the ball. Everybody playing between themselves in the basket. And that's a very defensively sound possession for the Tar Heels. RJ Davis almost traveled. That's the right call. Hands are on the back. And the foul on Dewana, and that's his fourth. Ty Claude will return as Dewana will go to the bench. He's giving Stoudemire some good minutes. Toughness inside. So too as Tafara Gapari is in the lineup. Once again, didn't even hit him on the screen. Washington, short wow. corner. Big time move. Love the patience right there by Washington. Turn face, take a shot. He's hit all three of his field goal attempts. He has eight points now. Heels showing some pressure in the backcourt. Where Georgia Tech gets points from right now with Miles Kelly on the bench. The playmaker on the floor is Studebert, and you got Nate George. They have to create things. How about some points from Tafara Gapari? Three-point game headed toward the 14-minute mark. Harrison Ingram rattled out. Kind of yeoman's work on the board. Struggled a little bit to shoot the ball tonight. There's another two of nine. Claude muscles it up and in. Claude with the big time defensive rebound and then the recipient off Studebert's drive. That's how you go up and crack into your defensive player and finish at the rim. Ryan 
Had it contested by Gapari and put it right in his kisser. A three ball from Cormac Ryan. That's his third tonight. Ball turns the corner. And Teddy Valentine calls the foul on the floor. The foul's called on Jalen Washington. You're going to see RJ gets into the gap. The defense collapses. They just lose where Carmack Ryan is on the floor. And you talk about that three over the long length of God Perry. And what a big time shot by Ryan. Four point lead after that. Ryan three, he's three of seven from behind the arc. That's accounted for all nine of his points. Sturdivant throws it deep. R.J. Davis tried to take it away from Gapari, but he's able to salvage it. Now Sturdivant in the corner for three. Davis tries to answer. And a whistle inside. And so it's a 50-50 ball right here. And Apari just being taller, he's able to get it. Puts the defense in a scramble situation. Well, like Sturdivant actually got fouled there after the shot going up. But what a big time play. Those are the types of plays, momentum-wise, allows Georgia Tech to stay in the game. Last foul was on Tajon Claude. Now Davis has it. For Mac Ryan this time inside the arc, and that wasn't close. And Gapari has it for Georgia Tech. Ryan got caught there. He didn't know if he wanted to pass it or shoot it. Always shoot if in doubt. The foul was Sturdivant was on his way to the basket. Gaffney called it on the floor. Now coming up next, Super Tuesday. Rolls on. Allen Fieldhouse, Kansas, hosting Oklahoma State, 9 o'clock Eastern time. It'll be followed by the nightcap, Oil, Marymount, and Gonzaga. The West Coast Conference, where Ben Stoudemire was once the head coach in that conference at Pacific. Did a terrific job there. Coach of the year in 2020, won 23 games. Finished third that season. year, right behind Gonzaga and St. Mary's. Yeah. And many times in the WCC, that's about the best you can hope for. Exactly. Kelly, he's been quiet in the second half. Gets his own. Lost it. The officials will talk it over, and it'll stay with the Yellow Jackets. Number three with 12 and a half to go on the ropes. It's been that way this season. Top 10 teams, 24 and 27 on the road against unranked wow. opponents. And letting it fly is Debo Coleman. And Georgia Tech is back on top. Wow. So North Carolina is playing faster than what they're comfortable with. You have to give Georgia Tech a lot of credit defensively. Carmack Ryan, they're forcing him to put the ball down on the ground and be a shot creator for himself. It's not ultimately his strength. He can do that, but that's not getting the best shot for North Carolina on that possession. Ryan, not the touch he customarily has. And and Gapari lost it on the way, but North Carolina touched it last, and we'll go to the under 12. And Nate George and the Yellow Jackets with a two-point lead. I mean, is this game everything you want it to be? People say it's the game before the game. No, it's about North Carolina versus Georgia Tech right now. Back to you. Well, that's, that's quite a resume builder for the Gamecocks, Ooh. I would say. And here... North Carolina trying to go 10-0 in ACC play, extend their winning streak to 11, which is the longest of any team in the power conferences. Georgia Tech hasn't beaten a top three team in quite a while. Did beat Duke here earlier this season. Blue Devils are not ranked that highly, and Ingram pulls it out of there as Harrison 
rebounded the ball well. It's nine tonight. R.J. Davis. So, so difficult to guard off, off the ball. If you're not staying on top of him within pick and roll, he can get into those gaps. You know, R.D. A lot of people text me saying, well, it's the game before the game, and they look distracted. No, that's an excuse. That's an excuse. This is a veteran team that understands every game matters. Ty Claude scored over Armando Baycott, who's returned after spending about five minutes on the bench, largely the product of Georgia Tech wreaking havoc on the offensive glass in the first three minutes of the second half. What kind of finish Baycott has? Ryan for three. The par has been really tough inside, and he's got another rebound. Really felt like Harrison Ingram had a chance. He lifted the defensive player up. Should have cracked into him. Went to the free throw line. Got three free, th free throws. Back with a two-point lead in the ball, nearing the halfway point of the second half. Baycott able to keep Claude from taking it away. Here comes oh, Davis. Oh, my goodness. Oh, R.J. Davis will go. Baycott tries to take the ball away after Coleman had gotten it first. And there's going to be a foul called on Armando Baycott. That's his second. Debo Coleman goes to the bench. He gave them some good minutes, hit a big shot a few minutes ago. Kelly has been controlled largely in the second half. Jalen Withers, number 24, has returned from North Carolina. Sturdivant lines one up. Three ball for Kyle Sturdivant. A five point lead for the wreck. Beth Tremble tries to answer, and Sturdivant has it. Tech on the run. Uncle Wasey Reeves thought about it, and he backed it out. Sturdivant to Kelly. Trimble out checking him. Kelly, tough shot over Trimble, and Seth has the rebound. Trimble all the way to the basket, and it just won't go down, but he'll go to the free throw line. You know, scouting report is to go under these ball screens. Third of a 35% three-point shooter. If you're going to go under, that's what they're going to live with, and he's been knocking them down today. Jay's Trimble steps to the free-throw line. He's missed both of his attempts, and it's been a problem spot for the Tar Heels in this game. They're just 5 of 11. Right into the student section, Seth makes the first one. Every Thursday, women's basketball doubleheader on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Number 17, Virginia Tech, hosts Virginia, 6 o'clock Eastern time. That'll start it. Then 24th ranked Tar Heel women take on Isaiah James at number 5, North Carolina State. It's all on the ACC Network. And the app, Withers, going to give the Heels a second chance on this possession. Shot clock at five. Ingram has to force up a tough shot. It's an air ball. And Gapari has another rebound for Georgia Tech. That's now a half dozen. Kelly trying to find a man. And Trimble has it. Georgia Tech gets back on defense. Great Ooh. hero step by Seth Trimble. Silky. Silky Seth Trimble. Seth might have used some salty language, but that was a sweet move. <laughs> well, one in Miles Kelly takes a bad shot, and how about a little step through? Excuse me, Seth Triple extending the lead, or excuse me, extend, cutting into the lead by two. It is surprising. They're gonna let you. Cool. Transition, Seth Trimble just gave me one heck of one. Right, left, east to west, blows by Studebert and finds himself right at the rim. This young man was brought off the bench for a spark. 
And hopefully he just gave the Tar Heel ones with one big time transition bucket. Under nine minutes to play. Georgia Tech with a two point lead on number three. Yellow Jackets no stranger, Jay Will, to close games. 14 games decided by single digits, third most in the nation. They're seven and seven in those games. One of the things Damon Stoudemire talked to us about today, sustaining in these moments. Use Saturday against Virginia Tech, for example. They whittled into a huge lead, got it down to seven points, and then couldn't finish, couldn't sustain. Yeah, then, George, then Virginia Tech went on a big-time run to blow it open. You know, the one thing he said they needed RD was a leader on the floor, somebody that can calm everybody down, tell them, you know, what time and possession is and get them in the right sets. I, I think Nate George can be that. Miles Kelly, even though their best offensive player, needs to be that as well. I would say the veteran Kyle Sturdivant has been that tonight. As he scores again, he's got 15. It's going to be on Elliot Cadeau to create shots for himself or other people. Back sitting in that zone, North Carolina is just one of eight in three point land in the second half. All knocked out. I don't know why Georgia Tech wouldn't grab that. I don't know why Georgia Tech wouldn't grab that. I'm going to tell you what, we talk about Miles Kelly, we talk about Nate George, but we have to talk about Studeman more and more and more. You talk about putting. Got set to join us live, but. You see what we have in store on Saturday. Uh, Heels have their hands full for the last 7.55 here in Atlanta. Yeah, and Duke looked pretty good in their game against Virginia Tech. We'll see how North Carolina handles this down the stretch. But, R.D., I mean, what a great slate of games on Saturday. Houston, Kansas is going to be a blast. Duke, Carolina, and then Tennessee, Kentucky. I mean, Dalton Connect, one of the top players in the country as well. Godot whistled for the foul. It's his fourth. And all of them have come here in the second half. Well, you ask, how has this happened? Well, North Carolina is shooting under 39% from the floor. And a Georgia Tech team that has given up 90-plus in three ACC games has played really good defense against Hubert Davis's team. You know, one of the big things to look up, you're seeing Elliot Cadeau right there, number two, body language is so critical. And a lot of times, young players, you want to see him do that, right? Obviously, the game is not going in his favor. He's been targeted defensively multiple times. But the only way to get yourself out of that funk is to throw yourself into what the team is doing. It's apparent he's frustrated. Learning how to play through these moments as a young player is critical for the overall maturity of this team. Well, Elliott has a tough go in the second half. He does have five assists. George. Puts down the free throws, and the Yellow Jacket lead is four. Georgia Tech in the zone. Got to get the ball in the middle of that zone. The Harrison Ingram turn, make a play. He's shown it a few times, and Godot has it wiped out of oh. there, and the ball is saved, and just some tough luck as the Wacey Reeves couldn't handle the save. Speak about the athleticism. Uh, Third of it got his hand on it the first time, and then the block from the weak side. Uh, effort by Georgia Tech is just tremendous. Boy, Reeves had it in his hand, very frustrated. He's had a tough night, just one of five from the floor, but very capable. Harrison Ingram has to flash or screen the top of that zone. Got clock at seven. Another turnover for the Heels as Ingram was expecting Davis to take it himself. Sturdivant slipped as he tried to get into Davis. Now Cadeau on the run. He leaves it with Ryan. Cormack over the top. And a good contest. Keeps it out of the bucket. And here come the Jackets and Sturdivant. Says we're going to take things easy here. And Stoudemire tells his godson, let's All have down. a good possession here. Par with one heck of a contest. Sturdivant. He's been good tonight. Couldn't get that one to go. Back 
switching D's again. Armando Baycott had his man. Armando Baycott had his man pinned down. Carolina just falling in love with outside shots. I let the big man eat a little bit. Now you correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe they switched defenses on him that time. No, they were in zone the first time, and then they changed it to man-to-man man man at it, last possession. They got him a little out of sorts. You're keeping him off balance. Yeah, well, it's the guard's job to recognize that. And the foul is going to be called on Godot, and that's going to be it. Except before, they have been attacking Elliot Godot defensively, really putting him in a bind. Elliot, tough game for a young player. But still North Carolina right in this hunt. All five fouls coming in the second half. We're not yet at the five-minute mark. He was coming off just an outstanding performance in Tallahassee over the weekend with 16 points and six assists. Yeah, but you know what, R.D., and that, you know, when they had 12 turnovers in the first half, when he got in foul trouble, that six-minute span, they had five turnovers. You know, it, his presence on the court is critical because of his decision-making down the stretch. Hasn't been his game today, but... His ability to make plays is additive to a guy like R.J. Davis. Nate George, seven of eight from the free throw line. He's got 13 points. And Georgia Tech with a six point lead. Georgia Tech going back into their two, three. Gotta hit Ingram in the middle. Good pass. Uh, Baycott and down one. low, oh. and Armando can't get it to go in. He'll go to the free throw line. Let's this is how you beat the zone. You hit the short corner, they trap, turn face, you drive, you hit that gap, you hit him again. Those are and one opportunities, but that's how you beat the zone. You can't just pass the ball around the perimeter and settle for a long contested shot. You got to hit the short corner. You got to drive. You got to hit the middle of the defense, force it to collapse. They caught a much improved free throw shooter this year. Just a tick under 80%. He's got nine points. That was his first free throw of the evening. The difference in the game right now is at the free throw line. Tex made theirs. North Carolina has struggled to make theirs. One of two for Baycott. Here's George again, another good pass to Claude, who just muscled his way in. Had a chance for a three-point play for Tajon Claude. So good at this high pick and roll. Look at Claude with his hands. Look at him providing a target. Armando Baycott, if you're standing up, he cracks into him, pushes him back underneath the basket. What a strong move by Claude to finish for the M1. Ty Claude, a 63% free throw shooter. He's got it, and Georgia Tech has its biggest lead of the evening with just over five minutes to play. Ingram with the offensive board. It got deflected. It'll stay with North Carolina. We go inside five to play. Now you just see a Georgia Tech team that is together right now. Look at that. Georgia Tech just had their huddle. Everybody from North Carolina looks a little bit spaced. Everybody's separate. They're not coming together. This Georgia Tech has that sense of urgency. The official signaling with 20 on the shot clock. Davis trying to shake the freshman George. And that goes back to the miscommunication right there. North Carolina not in the right set. RD, I can't tell you enough. When you're on the road, you have to come towards huddle so you can communicate what you're going to do each and every possession. They didn't do that the last possession where Georgia Tech did. Just seems like Georgia Tech is on the same page, whereas Carolina looks a little bit frazzled right now. Boy, Ty Claude. 
almost doubled his scoring average and he has had a hand on virtually every loose ball. He's been active on the boards. He's been physical on defense. Done a little bit of everything. There is Reeves trying to save it. And he's out of bounds. It'll be North Carolina ball. 20 back on the shot clock. I think the way Kowasi reacted, he thought for a second they called a foul on him. They just called him for being out of bounds. Davis into the paint, draws the foul. He'll go to the free throw line, R.J. Davis. R.J. Davis, what a big time play. You see, he trails him on the pin down. He keeps him on his back, kind of leans back, jumps into him, a foul over the top. That's a veteran going against a younger guard. And that's four on the freshman guard, George. We've already seen Cadeau foul out of this game. Both young guards getting a bit of a baptism from some of these veterans tonight. Davis is pure. He's got 24. Yields back within five. Not where you want to catch the ball. He splits the defense, and now Georgia Tech has an opportunity. And Kapari lost it out of bounds. I think he thought he was feeding it for a dunk, and... Well, that's where you just want Kalpari. If you're going to attack the rim, it. attack it. You have the athleticism. You have the mobility to finish around the rim. Attack it. That's the third turnover in the second half for the Yellow Jackets. So it would be a costly one. Baycott trying to get the handle inside. Tremble driving. Tremble driving. And he puts it in. Seth Tremble on the drive. So he's been making big time plays, getting into the gaps and the teeth of that defense. And that is absolutely the right call. Avoids the contact. Kapari is off to the side. That is a big time move by Seth Tremble and and one material. What did they call last year? Yeah. Before. Yeah. It was the right call last year and this and year. And this year. But it's maybe different. last year more inclined yes. to Give it the defense's direction. And now Trimble, who has struggled from the free throw line, just one of four, completes the three-point play. And just like that, number three has scored six in a row to get it back to two. And George is in trouble in the backcourt. But he is fouled. Hard to hear the whistle as Teddy Valentine's going to get Cormac Ryan for shoving a hip into him. Now with every foul for Georgia Tech, this game is going to come down to free throws. Georgia Tech in the double bonus. Both teams not being the best of free throw shooters. You got Georgia Tech shooting 67% on the season in North Carolina. They're shooting around 76%, but not in this game. They haven't been shooting well at all. Well, Tech's 303rd in the country in free throws, and they've made 14 of 15 tonight. And Georgia's now made eight of nine. Top 15 Big 12 women's basketball Thursday night on ESPN and the app. Madison Booker and Texas ranked 12th in the country, taking on 13th ranked Baylor. Our coverage starts at 8.30 Eastern time. George misses, makes one of two. He's at eight of his 10 free throws tonight, well above his season average. Tech clinging to a three-point lead as we hit the four-minute mark. Davis strong, R.J. Davis. And Georgia Tech will have to burn a timeout. They can't get it in bounds. There's a lot of Carolina blue that's suddenly alive. 69-68, we're gonna have a finish in McCamish. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Progressive Insurance. Bundle home and auto and save. Visit Progressive.com. Off the bench, Juan Harris is going to need to be a little bit more aggressive. 
and either Amarco Jackson or Nicholas Tebelek, they're going to have to step up with this opportunity. Jayhawks so tough at home. They host Oklahoma State. That game, again, tipping off on ESPNU in minutes. Back to you, R.D. R.J. Davis with a quiet 26, but look at the change of speeds right there. Shifting your boom, and then he finds a way to attack that gap. Now look at this angle. This is what smaller guards do to be successful when they attack. Look at the left hand, the left forearm. It braces up against the big, pushes off, finds a way to finish over the side with the right hand. What a big time finish for R.J. Davis. 26 points so far in this game. Georgia Tech had to use a timeout to get the ball in bounds. Those 26 from Davis. He's the only Tar Heel in double figures. Cormac Ryan and Harrison Ingram are a combined five of 25 from the floor. Kyle Sturdivant. Oh wow. Hey, Cole Bank! Friendly nighttime banking hours. And they're going to have a look as Teddy Valentine going to see if it's a two or a three. The Sturdivant have something called irrational confidence or what, R.D.? I mean, this is not a great shot. You're going to see him. Let's see if he savvy better away with a walk right there. That's well behind the three-point line. That's got three. The little shuffle beforehand. Oh, that's a three-point shot. That's still the irrational confidence to take that three off the dribble. That is a three off the dribble. What a big-time shot. Georgia Tech has been riding a hot second half hand of Kyle Sturdivant, 13 of his 18 coming in the second half. They've had a couple of big wins, but they've come close and let it slip away so often. They've lost eight out of nine. And they've got a chance right now. Damon Stoudemire in his first year, best uh, performance of the season by the Yellow Jacket bench. Now does R.J. Davis have another answer? Baycott has him buried deep in the paint, left it on the front of the rim, and the rebound goes to Kelly. Sure, Baycott wishes he can have that one back. He pinned him down really deep on the block. Nate George to the corner. Wanda's back into the game. He's been plagued with foul trouble tonight. Kelly had the big first half. But that one well short. Tar Heels on the move. Tremble. Looks away. Puts it up with the left. Can't get it to go. Baycott. Back up. A lot of wow. contact. No call in there. Body's flying. R.J. Davis comes out with it. Shot clock did not reset. Bryant for three. Too long. And Sturdivant comes out with it. And he'll settle things down again. Nine seconds left on the shot clock when Ryan shot that was still love the ball to be back in the hands of RJ. Rattles out on Sturdivant, a heartbreaker. Hubert Davis telling RJ Davis to push it. George cuts off Davis. Ingram wide open for three. He got it. The Tar Heels will take a timeout. So that play was developed because RJ Davis pushed the ball down the sideline. That is the pace. Hubert David and the Tar Hubert Davis and the Tar Heels want to play with Ingram having some answers. 30 second break here. Georgia Tech, Reese, back to you. And RJ just pushing the ball down the sideline. They rotate the ball. Georgia Tech late to recover. Harrison Ingram with a big time three. And that's in the scouting report, shooting 41% from the three-point line. They got to get a hand out there and contest because he can spread the floor. That make, J. Will, left Carolina two of 13 from three in the second half. They've been one of 12, but boy, did they need that one desperately. One-point game, under two minutes to go. How much fun has this been? I mean, come on. I mean, we have some of the best slate in the games of college basketball coming up this Saturday. And the basketball gods are rewarding us with a treat tonight. Carolina coming off a little bit of a struggle against Florida State, pulling away late with R.J. Davis and some of the heroics. And then once again, Georgia Tech just playing with a sense of urgency today. You know, playing up to the level of their competition. 
and North Carolina trying to find an answer late in this ballgame. Georgia Tech faded in Blacksburg on Saturday, ended up getting blown out, and they are taking the fight right to the very end in this one. Can they finish against number three? Ingram knocks it away, and the ball hits behind the back. It's about the fourth time that I watch Nate George keep running towards the baseline in these corners. And as he gets older in the game of basketball, he has to try to find a way to catch the ball in the middle of the floor. When you run towards the corners, the defense can use the sideline and the baseline as an extra set of defenders, and it puts you in harm's way. In the last couple of minutes, you know, happens with you here to see who hit the ball last. Goes the that, that's Ingram. Goes up, that's off Ingram. Yeah. That's Georgia Tech that's Georgia Tech basketball. Phil, you're, you're, you're playing into North Carolina when you catch the ball in those positions. That's where they want to trap you. Now, this is giving the Georgia Tech staff an opportunity perhaps to draw up something to combat that. Because they've had an adventure trying to get the ball in. North Carolina turned up the backboard pressure. That's one heck of a staff there for Damon Stoudemire over at Georgia Tech. Carl Hobbs, head coach at Washington for several years. Big time assistant, two time national champion with UConn and Jim Calhoun. BJ Elder, who played here as well. Bonzi Wells, who played 10 plus years in the NBA. And they are, they are prepped to do great things here in the future at Georgia Tech. Starting to make some inroads recruiting. That's by building relationships. Moments like this, they could somehow pull it off, would be it. Now, Let's look at this again. And right, let's talk North Carolina. It's Georgia Tech ball. After some consultation. Okay, they were looking, they were looking to see how much time was remaining to get the ball into the front court, and they deemed it it's eight seconds. But there'll be 28 on the shot clock. Notice where the press offense is setting up. The old Digger Phelps method. Got to set it up higher outside the top of the key, and that's where Georgia Tech's lining up now. Also, Claude and Gapari need to come back and be targets as well. There you go. Claude did just that. That gets it into the front court. And we'll get it in the hands of their freshman point guard, Nate George. Claude with a ball screen. That's the advantage right there. Harrison Ingram can switch that action. Start of it. Great defense. Great defense by R.J. Davis to knock it free. Now Davis has the ball. Carolina can take the lead inside 90 seconds to play. Seth Trimble needs to get out of the way. They clear out his side. Let him go to work. They caught running out. Davis, the back to Armando, kind of out of his shooting range. Ingram to three. Run of the rim, no good. George with the rebound. Still is quality possession for North Carolina. Ingram with a wide open three point shot. As good as Ingram's been, he struggled from the floor tonight, just three of 14. Gargantuan possession for the Jackets. I would get Baycott in the pick and roll, not Harrison Ingram. George, a little oh, space. Tough shot, hand on it by Claude. R.J. Davis beats everybody to the ball, uses the body, and puts the heels on top. Are you kidding me, R.J. Davis? He hunts down the 50-50 ball right here, now look. Calpari's there, he banks it to him first, throws him off balance. That's what smaller guards do to bigger players. That's a big time veteran savvy move by a guard that is pulling his team to a one point lead. And their first lead, Jay, since they were up 52-51, going for their 11th straight win, trying to remain perfect in ACC play with Duke looming in Chapel Hill this weekend.
I mean, and RD, I get it. Whenever you watch Zach Eady play, he is dominant. He is a force within itself. But the most dynamic guard in college basketball, that is RJ Davis. He is doing the little things. It was a strip. It was a 50-50 ball. It was back-to-back -back plays at the rim. But there's knocking down shots. His leadership is what's putting North Carolina in this position. And now Georgia Tech down by one with the ball. 34.6 to go. What do you think we're going to see from Damon Stoudemire's team? If Armando Baycott is on the court, I am having the ball in Sturdivant's hands. I am putting him in a pick and roll at the top of the key. I'm going to make Armando Baycott guard the likes of Sturdivant, who's been hot this entire game. I'm not going to call Harrison Ingram to a ball screen. He can switch that action. Gargantuan possession. The first year, Stoudemire is the head coach. An opportunity to establish how things are going to be when you come to Atlanta. They've already beaten Duke. They've got a chance against North Carolina, ranked third in the country. But the Jackets haven't scored in the last 253. Nardi, we said a lot of the games for the Yellow Jackets came down to those eight-point losses where those critical junctures could have gone either way. This is game time right now. I would not go with this matchup, though. The freshman Nate George guarded by R.J. Davis. And hold it. About a four-second differential. A little Haycott, less than that. Haycott in this high pick and roll. Now the shot clock at five. George drives, goes in, scores! Tech's on top, 7.7! .7. Hubert Davis wants a timeout, 4.6 to go. How about the freshman from Toronto, Nathan George? The kid has ice in his veins, RD. I said it, you get Baycott out in the pick and roll. It kind of exposes their defense. It puts him in a situation where he has to guard a dynamic guard. And what a shot with the left hand softly off the glass, off the left foot, RD. The degree of difficulty is a 10. An excellent call by you. A throw fake cut. It paid off. And now Georgia Tech, which has lost eight of its last nine games, one stop away from beating the third-ranked team in the country. You gotta get quick action if you're Hubert Davis in the Tar Heels. Maybe a little pin down into RJ, catching the ball into a pick and roll. I would almost use RJ as a decoy. Georgia Tech is gonna be all over RJ. It's gonna allow a guy like Harrison Ingram to make a play at the rim. You do not need a three. You're in the, you're in the bonus, you need to attack the rim. Look for Harrison Ingram. Ingram, as we've said, has struggled from the four tonight. Just three of 14. If they do indeed go to him and he has a chance at the play, this last one will be the only one that matters. And they're putting Miles Kelly, who's 6'6", on the likes of R.J. Davis, who's 6'1", trying to use that length to deter a contest any shot. Seth Trimble will inbound the ball. Gets it to Baycott. Wow. They're handing it to R.J. Davis. Davis, four to lead. The tip, it's over! He got fouled. Did they call the foul? No, it's a no call. No call 